Hello, everyone. We're back here with the Microsoft product team, the engineer team, to talk about Brigade V2. I'm here with Kent Rancourt. Kent, welcome to the channel. What do you want to show us? Hi, Jorge. Thanks for uh, having me today. Uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, V2 of Brigade, which is um, currently in a, a public beta. Um, and uh, we're anticipating a uh, generally available release this fall. Um, and uh, I, I guess to get started, I should probably give a little bit of background on, on what uh, Brigade actually is. Um, so some people have compared Kubernetes um, to an operating system. So if you ask yourself, what is an operating system? Well, it's, it's a program which, after loaded into memory, manages all the other processes on the device. So Kubernetes is like an operating system in a way, because once it's loaded into a cluster, it manages containers in a cluster. Instead of processes on a device, it's containers in a cluster. So there's this little bit of an, an analogy that Kubernetes is a um, cluster operating system. So um, our team um, several years ago started asking ourselves, well, if Kubernetes is an operating system of sorts, what are some of the features um, that a typical operating system that we're accustomed to, like Windows or Linux, um, has that might actually be missing um, from Kubernetes? And this is actually how um, Helm was born. Um, because the typical operating system has a package manager. Um, Kubernetes didn't have a package manager at the time, and so Helm closed that gap. Um, well, in a typical operating system, uh, you can script things, but there was no clear way to do that with, um, with Kubernetes. And that's where the idea for Helm uh, originally came from. So, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. The idea for Brigade. So Brigade is event-driven scripting for Kubernetes. You could actually almost compare it to, um, what does Apple call it on a Mac? I think it's like uh, action script or something like that, where it's very event-driven. So it's just the idea that some event happens and you've subscribed to that event. And so now you're going to execute some you know, um, piece of logic that that the user has has defined. So that's Brigade in a nutshell. Um, and uh, that sounds good. Like in all the cloud now with the cloud events as well. And and by the way, Brigade's part of CNCF and and cloud events as well, part of CNCF. Yes. And is that what we're trying to solve? We're trying to to get all these events that's happening and try to script something and have like output from that. It, that sounds good. Yeah. Sounds so good. so the um, you know so the 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 overall vision of the product has not really changed from uh, from V1 uh, to V2. But you could almost look at at Brigade V1 as having been like a, an MVP um, in some ways. Um, it it was very 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 light um, and it interacted um, very directly uh, with, with Kubernetes. So somebody using the, the Brig CLI uh, command line interface, for instance, uh, it was actually just talking to Kubernetes on your behalf using your credentials. Um, so one thing that we discovered over time was, was that Brigade could be really useful to people who maybe weren't experts on Kubernetes or people who didn't have direct access to a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and so when we started to work on, on Brigade 2, we decided that what was really in order was a, a, a nice clean abstraction between the Brigade user um, and Kubernetes so that there was um, something in between um, that would allow users who, who didn't have a, 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 a deep Kubernetes background or cluster access could allow them to still get some benefits out of Brigade. That sounds good. If you want to share your screen and show how they get started, how people get started, someone watching these and they want to get started with Brigade, they have, yeah, everyone has some 
scripting your background jobs they want to be you know running and answering uh, responding for for events and i'm assuming that's running inside the like a kubernetes cluster you have to install yes. that yes sure so let's share my screen and i remember many years ago talking about uh, you know helm and these things and say the first thing you need to install helm is to install a Kubernetes cluster, and brigades <laughs> the same, you know. It means you need Kubernetes to, you know, to use Kubernetes, and it's kind of uh, dependence now that all the products have with the Kubernetes itself. Yeah, and the, and that's that's a very important point that that you're raising because, um, you know, I I said that we've abstracted um, Kubernetes. We've worked very hard to make it so that the end users of Brigade don't have to be Kubernetes experts. Um, but Kubernetes is still um, a, a dependency for Brigade. So if you if you want to install Brigade, you do, of course, need to have um, a Kubernetes cluster um, at your disposal. And you do need to know a little something about Helm. Um, and that's what our starting point is here. So I, so I, I have uh, taken the liberty of already launching a kind cluster um, for those who don't know, KIND um, stands for Kubernetes in Docker, and it's actually um, an entire Kubernetes distribution running inside uh, a Docker container, which is actually kind of crazy uh, if you think about it, but it, it works very well. Um, and so I've got that up and running um, already. And um, so I have this little alias that I use a lot, WK, <laughs> which just stands for Watch Kubernetes. Um, and uh, when I do that, it just uh, looks for all the pods and all of the namespaces, and it refreshes every two seconds. Um, now, again, you really don't need to be a Kubernetes expert to get something out of Brigade 2, but I like to show what's happening in the background here. Um, so, so this window here will be our, our little um, glimpse into what's happening. Um, in the background. So I suppose the, the first thing that we should do um, is we should go ahead and install Brigade onto this, onto this fresh cluster. Um, so we do have uh, documentation over here. Um, so I'm, re I'm really just going to, to follow along with, with the directions in our quick start here. Um, now, we're doing something a little bit experimental. Um, we're using an experimental Helm 3 feature um, in order to facilitate the installation. Um, some people may know this, some people may not, but um, OCI registries like um, GitHub uh, Container Registry or ACR, the Azure Container Registry, um, they don't, they're not only capable of hosting uh, OCI uh, Docker images anymore. They're capable of hosting other things as well. Um, and so we're actually using uh, a registry um, to store our chart. Um, now, as I said, this is a little bit experimental. Um, so there is, a, there is an environment variable that you have to set to get started. And you have to, um, you have to enable the Helm experimental OCI. So we'll do that to get started. Um, and then from there, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm just copying these commands directly out of the, the quick start. Um, so we're going to pull the chart um, from the registry. This, this is going to pull it down into a, a local cache. Um, and then we're going to export it into a local directory. And then we're just going to install it from that directory. And we'll just do this. I, I had a two in there originally because sometimes I have Brigade and Brigade 2 running um, side by side, but we're not worried about that right now. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And so we're, we're of course, using uh, all of the default options right now, you see I'm not, you know, really configuring anything. I'm just running with all of the default options. Um, 
you really shouldn't do that in production. <laughs> um, so I want to be very clear about this, that the default options are not secure. Um, this documentation here is really oriented around getting people up and running quickly um, so that they can kick the tires. It's it's not, uh, you know, the, we'll have separate documentation that, that covers how to do a real bulletproof um, production grade installation. Um, so, over here, we can see all of this stuff coming up right now. Um, you do see some errors and some crash loops. Um, things do flap a little bit while they're coming up. We have a database. Um, we have uh, a distributed queue. Um, these things have to be up and running before things like the API server will be able to start up successfully. The API server has to start up successfully before other components like the observer and the scheduler can start successfully. So things may flap for a little while. Um, generally within two to three minutes, we we have everything stable and running. Um, it's a nice thing about Kubernetes. Things kind of restart until then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll- That sounds good. In the meantime, I, I that's nice that you have like a Helm shot. You can pretty much run. The only dependence you're going to have is Helm itself. I think yes. you're assuming that using Helm 3 plus version 3. Yes, it's got to um, be it's got to be Helm 3 or higher. Yes. So All right, so I'm I'm going to accelerate the process of this. Uh, it, it looks like everything has come up. Um, I'm just going to accelerate the process a little bit. I I deleted the API server pod. A new one will pop up. Everything that it's waiting for is ready to go. And then once that's ready to go, everything else will fall in line. As I said, normally, you know, three minutes or so to get everything up and running. Um, we're just accelerating the process here a little bit. Yeah. If you uh, want to, in the meantime, explain, I think the main they say the main objects of of um, of brigade, like events, projects, and how you how you run that. I don't know if I have any diagram there, but yeah, I think it would be nice for people to understand. Sure. How brigade and welcome uh, uh, Scott. Scott Carlton just showing us as well. Welcome Scott. We're recording here with Kent. And hi, how's it going? Hi, Scott. Okay, so so yeah, while while we're waiting, actually most components are up and running now. But while we wait for the the last few, um, yeah, we can we can talk about um, you know some of the key concepts. Um, so I, I do have a slide deck here that I've been uh, working on recently, and if if you don't mind me uh, reusing some of the content from that slide deck, it it might be helpful. Um, so. Uh, Let's see, th this basically covers the, the general idea um, behind uh, Brigade. So um, we have external systems um, that are not part of Brigade. They are not necessarily hosted in Kubernetes. Um, they are uh, more commonly things like um, GitHub or Bitbucket, um, Docker Hub or uh, uh, an Azure Container Registry. Um, so they they are um, external systems that send events to um, gateways. Now, what gateways are is they are little bits of integration that our team has developed um, that basically um, bridge the divide between those external systems and Brigade. Um, so they take um, for instance, webhooks from from a place like uh, GitHub, and they look at the webhook and they transform it into um, a brigade event, and they use the brigade API to um, to propagate that event onto um, brigade's own event bus. So this diagram here is a, a, a pretty good representation of how things ordinarily work. Now. Of course, events aren't really useful unless something is uh, subscribed to the event and it does something in response to it. 
um, handles it in some way. And and I apologize for any background noise you you get now. My kids just got home from school, um, so uh, so yeah, we do also have projects. So a project is, is pretty simply the pairing of uh, an event subscription with some worker configuration. Um, and when I say worker, I just really mean a, a container that will handle the event. Um, you'll see all of this in, in action very shortly. Um, but those are the two key concepts um, in Brigade are events, and then you have projects that are subscribed to those events and will and they describe a, a, a handler of some sort. Yeah, Ken, that's that's one thing I, I always like it on Brigade is that's why people compare with uh, CI CD or a pipeline because you can have like jobs inside this worker configuration where you can group like steps similar to you know like a agent in a pipeline like Azure DevOps or Jenkins or or GitHub Actions and and the nice thing you you manage that communication between those containers running those scripts, then you're passing you know information from one step to another step. How how that works? I think that's one thing that make Brigade different from from anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know I'm and I'm so glad that you mentioned um, CI and CD um, because you know it it. It would be easy um, and forgivable to um, mistake Brigade for uh, a CI CD platform. Um, it happens to be very good at CI CD because CI CD, um, those are usually event driven workflows, right? Something happened, like somebody opened a pull request. And because something happened, because an event happened, we have a thing that we now want to happen. We want to handle that event in some way, which is probably running a suite of tests or um, lint checks or you know any number of things. So um, Brigade lends itself very, very well to um, CI and CD, but certainly not exclusively for it. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah, that's true. It's not like a CI CD, but is it? let's say is a tool is a framework that allows us to to script background things inside the cluster but doesn't have to be any kubernetes event could be events coming from like you said you're doing like a transformation from those external events to brigade events yes and you can subscribe those configurations that those projects can subscribe to those events yes and um that's that's something new that's on Brigade V2, that subscription or? Uh, yes, it, it absolutely is. Um, so so Brigade 1 took um, a, a more simplistic approach um, to um, events and matching them up with, with projects. So um, any incoming event um, had to explicitly call out, you know, I'm for this project. Um, and that's very different in Brigade 2, where it's all based on, on subscriptions and events are routed to projects um, really based on metadata, um, which opens up the possibility that you could have, for instance, um, multiple projects subscribed to the same event and they'll all handle it um, differently. Sounds good. Yeah, so and in some way, some way Brigade works like like Kubernetes, we're watching um, events, then we have like a scheduler that's going to to trigger, you know, to start those those projects, um, to process those events, and then where you create pods on Kubernetes, like containers to process these. Mm -hmm. But if we have multiple steps, then we handle all that communication and passing parameters, let's say, or information from one pod to another and keep running. That's all done by Brigade itself. The only thing you have to write is maybe you can show like a simple worker configuration for us. What's that worker configuration? I think that's the main question now is that I know that type could be TypeScript, could be JavaScript. Can you show some example for us? Oh, yeah, sure. So so I think the, the first thing is let me show um, 
you know, an example event. Um, so this is a, a YAML representation uh, of an event. Um, and uh, I want to be very clear because th this probably looks to a lot of people who are familiar with Kubernetes, this probably looks like a Kubernetes manifest. Um, it's not a Kubernetes manifest. It just looks a lot like one. Um, you know, they say imitation is the sincerest form of, of flattery. Um, we we took a lot of inspiration from from you know other projects that we like. If we like the way that somebody did something, um, you know, we we weren't shy about replicating the approach. Um, so this does look a lot like a Kubernetes manifest, but it's not. There are no CRDs whatsoever um, involved in the game. Um, so the the really important things here in this uh, YAML representation um, of an event, um, you see that there's a source. Um, this basically tells you what gateway um, the event came from. So what was the entry point into the system? Um, then we have a type. So each gateway is capable of, of um, emitting certain types of events. Um, and usually those just map one to one with different types of events that they may have, uh, that those gateways may have received from some upstream system. Um, so, you know, if there's a uh, pull request opened event that GitHub can send to our GitHub gateway, then our GitHub gateway emits a pull request opened event into, into Brigade. Um, so these are two very important pieces of information. Every event has this. It says, where did it come from and, and what is it? Um, now, beyond that, we also have qualifiers, um, which are kind of like labels in a way. Um, you know, again, anybody uh, familiar with Kubernetes probably knows how labels work. Um, and you can uh, make selections of things based on, on labels. Um, qualifiers are similar to that in a way. Um, the only difference between um, a qualifier and what people might be accustomed to with, with uh, labels in Kubernetes is that a qualifier is a, a must match kind of thing. Because take this example of an event coming from GitHub. I think it's pretty safe to say that nobody wants to subscribe to um, every pull request opened on every repository, right? Um, you probably want to narrow that down to a particular repository. Um, so, so this uh, event basically, you know, the metadata on this event says um, anybody who's subscribed to this source, this type, and these qualifiers should receive me. Yep, sounds good. You just said something about uh, gateways. Maybe if you have any slide there, just to explain exactly. I had a look on the documentation. Like I really like the idea of gateways to become more extensible. Let's say like that means that we we even looking for for the community to to create new gateways. Is that what we're looking for? Oh yeah, absolutely. And and one thing that I'm very proud of that we've done with V2 is I think that we have um, lowered the bar dramatically um, for um, you know, creating a, a, a new gateway. Um, it's a very easy thing to do because we have some really great SDKs um, that we have created um, this time around. So yeah, we've got our Brigade API server um, and that's all RESTful, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, you don't need to go digging through the documentation to figure out how all of those uh, API calls work because we have SDKs that are bindings um, to that API. So we have a, a Go SDK. Um, we have a Rust SDK that is still a work in progress. It's really not ready for, for prime time yet. Um, and we do have another SDK um, for uh, JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, so uh, we've made it very, very easy to create your own gateways. And um, speaking from, from my own personal experience, um, I can you know, usually create a new gateway in about a day. Um, they're, they're really simple things to create. It's usually just a matter of receive an event from some upstream source 
and then emit a, an event into Brigade. It's usually a pretty simple thing to do. That, that's nice. We could you could do maybe another video later uh, explaining just talking about gateways. But oh, yeah. we have some out of the box gateways that normally we enough for people to get started. What we have today, like what what gateways we have available today? Um, so uh, currently we've got um, a GitHub gateway, uh, Bitbucket, uh, Cloud Events, Docker Hub, uh, Azure Container Registry, um, and uh, currently working on ones for um, Slack and Teams. And I believe we may do um, possibly Discord as well. Um, but you know, as you mentioned earlier, you know, we we may be looking to the community to develop um, interesting integrations as well. Um, and and I'll put this out there right now that that uh, Karen is actually um, cooking up some really nice uh, swag right now. And uh, if if anybody wants to, you know, really get involved and create some interesting gateways. Um, and maybe help us kick the tires on, on our Brigade 2 beta, um, you know, there could be some really sweet uh, swag in it for them. That sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> I want the one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so um, maybe just before we really get into the live demo, I'll show you one more thing. So, so this was a YAML representation of uh, an event, and we looked at the meta source, uh, uh, the metadata, um, that describes the event and helps it get routed to the projects that have subscribed to it. Um, so maybe we should look at what a what a, a project looks like. Um, so you know, as as was mentioned earlier, a project just pairs uh, an event subscription with some worker configuration. Um, and here's a YAML representation of that. So so here we've said that, um, we're subscribed to events that come from the GitHub gateway. Um, we're subscribed to a um, particular type of event. In this case, it's it's um, watch started, um, which is the uh, event that occurs when somebody stars a repository. Um, and uh, again, qualifiers are like labels, but but it's a must match kind of thing. So we we only want this stuff if it came from, uh, the brigade core brigade repo. So that that's that's our own repository. So if if you um, go and you star our repository, please do. Um, <laughs> you would you would be creating one of these events. Um, and uh, this project subscribes to that event. And you can see here that we've actually embedded um, a, a script that handles the event. We've embedded it right in the the project definition. Now you certainly don't have to do that because that's not necessarily a convenient way to work. You know, you lose the benefits of of your um, syntax highlighting and and all of that sort of stuff. So there there are other ways to to do that. This would be probably the the simplest way. Um, but this script will run in response to uh, that event. That sounds good. And using using uh, TypeScript there, JavaScript. Well, well, this is JavaScript in this case, but we but we do support um, TypeScript as well. I and I I personally um, very much prefer working with TypeScript. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's also worth mentioning that um, the way we designed everything. Um, we're we're really hoping to introduce um, support for um, you know alternatives in the future, um, so that it's not just JavaScript or TypeScript, but um, you know say that that uh, somebody wanted to use Lua, um, you know, or somebody wanted to use something declarative. You want to describe how to handle events um, using you know a tiny chunk of of YAML. Um, we we have left the hooks in the system um, where you know there's the potential to to go and add support for more things like that in the future. It's already very powerful there. You can you can do now you have a script answering to to events, then you can do anything that you want there. You're running inside the cluster, then 
you can use everything that Kubernetes can, can probably give you there as well. And um, that sounds good. You know, just get one running there. Or, or, um, I think you haven't showed this CLI yet. But, no, so I so yeah. now would probably be a good time to do that. So um, I, I've, uh, you know, I call it the, uh, sometimes I call it the Julia Child approach. You know how uh, she would put the turkey in the oven and then she would pull a fully cooked turkey out of her other oven um, <laughs> without missing a beat. Um, so, I, you know, I, I've taken the liberty of pre-installing the, the Brigade CLI, but uh you know, again, there are instructions for that in the quick start, and we'll link we'll link people to that quick start. Um, so I, I do have the CLI pre-installed. Um, now, because there is uh, an API server involved, there's something that I need to uh, authenticate um, or log into. Um, so this is uh, something that people who um, used Brigade One in the past maybe uh, unaccustomed to because as I said, Brigade One was um, very light and kind of just interacted directly, the CLI interacted directly with Kubernetes um, while pretending to be you using your own credentials. Um, things work a little bit differently now. So the first thing we really do need to do is we need to um, log in. So I'm going to type Brig login um, and I'm going to tell it where um, the server is. Now I happen to, on my system, have um, this mapped um, to this port. Um, this is just something that I have set up all the time because it saves me it saves me time. You could do a, a kubectl um, port forward command or something like that to be able to, to reach this API server. Um, but uh, this just saves me a little bit of time. Um, so, so we're going to log into this server. Um, there are two other commands that are, or two other flags that I'm going to set on this. The first one, uh, anybody who's used curl will recognize this, the dash K, um, which means insecure. Um, because, uh, you know, when I installed this, I used all the default options and that includes self-signed certificates. Um, so, uh, as I said, absolutely don't, don't, don't use the defaults in production. Um, but, uh, there are self-signed certificates involved. So we're just going to use dash K to indicate that that's okay. We understand the risk. Um, and the one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to log in as root. Um, now, again, th this is not something that I recommend people do um, in production. Uh, what we did was we built support for third party um, identity providers. Uh, so you can log in using GitHub. Uh, you can log in using um, uh, uh, Azure Active Directory. You could log in using um, a Google Cloud Identity Platform. Um, so there are a lot of options for how you log in, but because I just ran with the defaults when I installed this, none of that is set up. So I'm using this less secure option of, of logging in as root. Um, if you're running um, this in production, you can, of course, um, enable the third party uh, identity providers, and you can disable the the root login. So that, that sounds good. Um, and one thing I like there is it's more like production and enterprise ready now, Brigade V2, because now we have an API server, we have a better authentication. Um, you know, sounds safer and sound you know more enterprise grade for me. Sounds good. Now, now. Now this is interesting. I'm I'm being uh, s smitten, smoted uh, by the 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 demo gods right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna do a uh, a port forward because maybe my uh, port shenanigans didn't work out the way that I yep. thought they did. Um, um, so we're gonna forward this. I'm running with. Uh, SSL, and I forgot about that. Um, you can see up here that it's port uh, 443. So um, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So we'll do our 
local 8080 to our 443. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's so let's try this again. So we should use 8080. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So, so we're past our uh, our our port shenanigans. Um, you know, anybody who's done much with Kubernetes knows how how uh, all of that goes, right? Um, so we are we're logged in now, and uh, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll do basically a, a hello world um, kind of thing. Um, so uh, I have uh, here. Um, several examples, and we'll just take a look at this little um, "Hello World" uh, project, and it's it's very similar to the uh, the YAML representation of a project that that we were looking at in that slide deck. Um, so uh, we just subscribe to a few different. Uh, we subscribe to an event. Um, from a particular source, um, that source being the CLI. The CLI is capable of producing events. Um, so gateways are not the only things that can produce events. That's the, the typical workflow, is that events enter the system through a gateway, but the CLI can produce events as well. Um, so we're subscribed here to um, exec events coming from the CLI. Um, and if you look at our worker, um, we've enabled some uh, debugging, and uh, we have a, a script embedded here, and the script does absolutely nothing more complex than, than saying um, hello world. So we can, um, we can load this into Brigade. We can say brig project um, create and give it a file, and we'll pass it uh, that file that we were just looking at. And there we go. We've got uh, now a, a project called Hello World. And we can, uh, of course, list projects. And we can, we can see that. We can um, get projects. Uh, oh, that was right. Project get ID Hello World. Um, all the uh, things that you're used to doing in Kubernetes um, work as well. So you can say like uh, O JSON or O uh, YAML and see JSON or YAML representations of, of your project. Um, you'll, you'll notice uh, some interesting things here. Um, this field was filled in by the system. This was not provided by us. Um, behind the scenes, Brigade created a namespace just for this project. Um, now, you, the end user, never touches Kubernetes or interacts with, with Kubernetes directly. Um, but uh, Brigade did create a namespace for this project um, and uh, is keeping track of the fact that, that uh, this project is associated with, with that namespace. That's nice. So what we can do now is we can create an event. And as I said earlier, events typically come into the system through um, a gateway, but but we can create events with uh, the CLI. So I, I think that's what we'll do right now. And we'll say brig event create, um, and we're going to create an event for uh, a specific project. Um, and uh, in this case, we're we're going to say um, so we'll create an event for the Hello World project, and it created an event with this ID, and you can actually see uh, a little glimpse into that over here. Remember, I said um, this was our glimpse into uh, what is running. Um, in the uh, uh, behind the scenes in Kubernetes right now. This is the namespace that uh, we saw earlier. Uh, it's done. It's already running. It's completed. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's already it's all it's this namespace that it was assigned. Um, yeah, it's already running. It completed. 
Um, now, uh, there is a component uh, running inside Brigade called uh, the Observer um, that will that has noticed by now that this uh, completed, and it used the API server to update everything. Um, so we can um, Brig event list. And you know we can see here that uh, it succeeded. Um, now you see the the pod hanging around here for a little while. Um, that same component, the observer, um, after one minute, will delete this pod. Um, the reason for the one minute grace period is because we're using a uh, a logging agent. We're using Fluent D to collect logs from every job. Um, and uh, it's a one minute grace period just to make sure that we got all the logs. If if things um, got backed up a little bit, we just want to know that that we we left a window of opportunity for all the logs to be collected. Um, so it, it's probably um, good to show that that we can um, get the logs from from the uh, the event that we just handled. Remember, this is a hello world example, right? So we could um, say brig event logs ID. We can give it um, the ID, and you can see everything that it did, including writing out hello world, which is which is really what we uh, wanted to do. Um, now. This obviously is not a very useful, you know, example. So, um, you know, it, it, it's probably worthwhile to look at a slightly more um, complex um, example. Um, so we could we could look at something like, um, you know, a, a, a kitchen sink example that has a, a little bit of everything in it, um, and and I'm. Uh, I, I might even show this one in action. So let's so so let's do that. We'll go back and we'll um, add a new project. Okay, so this is uh, a kitchen sink demo. Um, so it responds to a uh, uh, an event from the CLI, much like the other one did, um, but. Uh, this one behaves uh, a, l a little bit differently um, than the other one did. You see that there's no script embedded here. Um, instead, what we have are we have um, coordinates to um, to to get the script out of uh, using Git. Um, so, uh, and I should point out this is not GitHub specific. It's just Git in general. Um, so we've provided here the the coordinates to to get that script. Um, that script happens to also be right here, so we can take a look at it. Um, and we've done something um, quite a bit more sophisticated um, than our hello world uh, example here. And the the really cool thing that we've done here is we've used a library called Brigadier, um, which is something that we have created as well. And uh, what Brigadier does is it, it basically gives you an API um, for creating jobs. Now, what are jobs? It is um, further uh, containerization of um, discrete tasks. So um, this is how you go about creating very complex pipelines um, inside Brigade. So you can you can well imagine that. Well, we'll, we'll take Brigade itself. Brigade has components um, that are implemented in Go. Brigade has components that are implemented in TypeScript. So when somebody opens a PR, uh, I want to run uh, Go unit tests, but I also want to run TypeScript unit tests. Well, as you may imagine, I don't have a Docker image handy that has both Go uh, and Node.js, TypeScript, et cetera, on it. Um, so, you know, it's useful to be able to um, say this job happens in a container that that looks like this. And if that succeeds, 
follow it with this job that happens in a, a container that looks very different from that other one. Or instead of running them serially, you could run them concurrently. Um, and, and that's what we're starting to demonstrate in this much more complex example. You see, I, I create four different jobs and then I concurrently run two different sequences. So we concurrently run this sequence and we can currently run this sequence. Um, within this sequence, job one runs and then job two, and within this sequence, job three and, and then job four. Um, now, all of that, I should say, is subject to scheduling constraints. So, um, you know, when you install Brigade, you can place limits on what's the maximum number of workers that can be running concurrently, what's the maximum number of jobs. Um, that can be running concurrently. So this is all subject to, to scheduling constraints. Um, but if I go ahead and create uh, an event here, um, much like we did before. Do you want to use the follow? I, I saw that you have the dash dash follow as well. Be nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna show that this time. I wish I had showed it the 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 first time. Um, so we're going to uh, create an event for the kitchen sink, and I'll add the the follow this time. Um, and by the way, I'm deliberately trying to use the the long form flags for everything. I mean, you know, this works also. Um, but for for the viewers right now, it's it's less mysterious if I just do the the extra bit of yep. typing. Um, so so what this is going to do now is it's going to create the event, um, and then it's going to wait for um, the event to move out of a pending state and into a running state. And once um, that happens, it's going to start streaming the logs down to um, the CLI. So we can see that it's waiting for the events worker to be running, and that shouldn't take very long. We're going to see it pop up over here. Um, now you see an init container running this time. You didn't see that before in the previous examples. This init container is yanking stuff down from, uh, from GitHub right now, because remember, we didn't embed our scripts this time. Uh, we gave Git coordinates for it instead. Um, so you can see that it has compiled our TypeScript, um, and uh, it's now running our jobs. That, that's a nice thing to show that. Now, the jobs will be running separate containers. Yes, and you can see all of those right here. And then that's the orchestration that I was talking about, that use a sidecar to, to do the Git clone and get the, the Git repo there. Mm -hmm. And as I need container, then that's going to trigger. There's a scheduler happening there, creating the other, the other process, the other pods to run each um, job. That's the step that we call, like a group of of scripts. And that's very powerful. And that's what I love about Brigade, to be honest. People can do very advanced things on that. I even did a talk many years ago when you had Brigade V1 say that we could build like a pipeline system, you know, like a CI CD using Brigade mm -hmm. as your engine, let, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, it's very powerful. The, the, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can actually um, accomplish with this. Um, so it, it's, you know, because because we can spawn jobs that are based on really any type of Docker image that you like, um, and because we can chain them together, and because it's very easy to um, either find the gateway that responds to events from whatever system you like, or very easy to create a gateway of your own, um, really this just becomes a very powerful platform for connecting any arbitrary event with any arbitrary piece of action that you would um, like to, to take in response to it. Um, so I, I, I do want to show, um, you know, again, because, you know, a normal end user is not looking at, at Kubernetes all the time like we are here. So I'm just going to, to hide this and show, you know, what it looks like when, when you're just using the, the CLI to, to look at this stuff. So we can list recent events. Um, here's the kitchen sink event that we just saw running recently. Um, and we can say brig event get. And 
it even breaks down here are all the jobs and here here's when they started here's when they ended here's here's their status um and uh we can even get uh logs for individual jobs so if you if you don't mention uh any particular job you get logs for the worker um but um you know we can uh look at a particular job like a worthwhile donkey here and you know you can you can see the logs that were produced by individual jobs that's amazing and we, and we even can see the logs that were produced by the um by the init container that that pulled everything down um out of github i think if we uh do this for instance um you can you can actually see the logs from the git initializer as well i would say it's a very complete you know job engine that it can script anything that you want but at the same time it can connect with events but it's flexible to be extensible because you can create new gateways to you know to transform those events on brigade events and and it's all running inside kubernetes running as containers using you know a um, very popular language that's javascript or typescript i think it's amazing it, you know i can see people building very advanced you know and powerful solutions using brigade and now v2 is very enterprise level i can see enterprise companies and developing those you know background jobs that sometimes people still using like windows server you know <laughs> jobs there mm -hmm. that's um this way probably be easier to maintain you know to to manage yes and if you go a little bit back for the old fellas watching this is it's kind of have a mainframe in your hands because mainframe used to do exactly that <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's batch jobs you know <laughs> that's exactly I remember on uni on the university learning that and it's exactly the same thing you're just triggering like a batch job and mm, even the windows and the linux came from from the mainframe that's the idea of you know batch jobs and but mm. that's the next level that's the next level for me because not ju just running anything now we can have like a very advanced pipeline let's say but it's not a pipeline it's like steps or jobs that can talk with each other that's very powerful mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah that and that's really what we're trying to do we're we're, we're trying to build a, a very powerful um general purpose asynchronous event driven scripting framework i really want to emphasize that it is asynchronous because um you know as i said earlier there is a scheduler involved and you can put constraints on it so um you know if if you have uh you know 100 events come in the door all at once your cluster doesn't necessarily have the resources to handle all of those all at once so you can put constraints on it but um yeah we 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 are trying to create a a, a powerful general purpose um event driven scripting um platform um but you know at the same time we're we're also trying very hard to grow um a big ecosystem uh around this so that we have a lot of useful integrations that are just you know ready to go and all you have to do is is um deploy them um so uh in addition to um the uh the gateways that were mentioned earlier um we're also doing a, a little bit of chaos engineering um so we have something called the noisy neighbor um which is almost like a, a gateway uh in a way but its job is to just um blast a lot of events into uh into brigade and make noise and that's uh something that that we have been using um occasionally to kind of just put additional load um on our cluster um and uh we also have uh uh, uh an integration um with uh, prometheus and grafana so we can get metrics um out of the brigade api server and and display them 
Um, and uh, we, we do have a user interface that we are uh, working on um, at the moment and uh, hopefully a second user interface to come uh, in the future as, as well. So, so we are trying very hard to, to, to build a very robust ecosystem around this platform. That sounds amazing, Kent. I think we're going to to come back in and do like a second part or a deep dive. And there's a lot of things that we can we can show. I think with Brigade, we maybe can bring some customers or some people that really you know using that in production, and show you show you us what they you know what they're using for. I know that we're using that at Microsoft itself internally, mm. and um, we'll be amazed. Thanks a lot for for showing that for us. Oh yeah, I would thank you for having me and and I absolutely would love uh to to come back and 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 do more, maybe show off a particular um gateway or or something like that. I know our GitHub gateway especially is one that that um that we're we're very proud of. It's it's very um it's very smooth and very complete in, in terms of everything that it does and and that's something in particular that I would really really love to to show off in a, a future installment. We're going to do it. Thanks a lot. All right, let's do it. All right. See ya. All right, thank you so much.